Hello there, my name's Fernando and I'm a developer advocate here at GitLab. And today I'm gonna to show you some of GitLab's security and governance features and show how they can assist in enhancing your organization's security posture. GitLab provides security scanners for the complete application lifecycle. These security scanners directly integrate into your CI CD pipeline allowing you to find and fix vulnerabilities before they make it into a production level branch. Coverage includes source code, dependencies in your projects or container images, vulnerabilities in the running web application, as well as infrastructure as code configuration. These security scanners can be easily added to your CI CD pipeline using GitLab's built-in templates. When creating a merge request from a feature branch to a target branch, GitLab scans the difference between the two. Here we can see that license compliance has detected five new licenses within our dependencies. Later, we'll show how you can create a policy to either deny or accept certain licenses. We can also see that security scanning has detected at least 63 new potential vulnerabilities. These vulnerabilities are sorted by the scanner type and then its severity. When we click on a vulnerability, we get detailed information on how the vulnerability affects our system, where it's located, as well as additional information to assist us in remediation. This includes relevant links and identifiers, such as that to the CVE or CWE, the response and request sent, along with security training to assist your developers in learning how to resolve vulnerabilities, as well as a solution. From here, we can dismiss the vulnerability and provide reasoning as well as a comment to make it easier for the security team to review. We can also create a confidential issue to further collaborate on this. The confidential issue provides a place for developers and AppSec teams to collaborate without alerting possible malicious actors. The same can be done to work on a fix through a confidential merge request. GitLab provides security guardrails or policies which enable security and compliance teams with a way to enforce controls globally within their organization. The first type is the merge request approval policy, which ensures proper approvals are provided on merge requests based on the results from those findings, centrally enforces multiple approvers on all merge requests, and enforces various settings on projects in the scope of organizational requirements, such as enabling or locking merge requests and repository settings. Merge request approval policies can either be enabled at the group or project level. You must specify a name and description to identify the policy, and you can quickly enable it or disable it from the UI. These policies can be scoped towards either all projects in the group, projects with a particular compliance framework, or specific projects with or without exceptions. We can add the rules for our policy, such as any merge request, which overrides the project approval settings within that merge request, such as preventing approval by the merge request author, preventing approval by the commit author, and more. Another rule is security scan, which can require approval by the vulnerabilities detected by our various security scanners. Now note that this is granular and you can select different approvals depending on the results of different scanners, including the severity types and what branches they were detected in. An example of this usage is you can require the security team to only assess critical and high vulnerabilities and then possibly have the team lead only assess those with low and medium severity. You can also scope different scanners towards different specialists who are better suited to approve. Then there's the license scan rule, which will require approval depending on the licenses that are detected within our dependencies. 
The rule can be set for licenses detected that match a certain type or licenses except for those defined. For example, MIT variant licenses. This means that approval will be required if any licenses except these are detected. This allows us to avoid legal implication by adding excessively permissive licenses to our projects. We must then set an action meaning how many approvals to require and from who. Here, we can include roles, individual users, and groups. These policies are stored as code within a separate project, which allows you to assign different permissions as to who can access and edit this project, allowing you to enforce separation of duties. The security policies are stored as YAML and can be edited using either the web editor or your preferred IDE. Then there's the scan execution policy, which ensures that security scanners run in development teams pipelines with proper configurations, that all scan jobs execute without any changes or alterations, and that various compliance settings are enforced throughout. Scan execution policies have a similar interface and can be created using a UI by providing a name, description, status, and scope as seen in merge request approval policies. With scan execution policies, you can select an action such as running a scan or custom CI CD code, for example, running a secret detection scan or any of our other scanners on runners with specific tags under conditions we can add such as triggered every time a pipeline runs on certain branches or even on a schedule. You can also add custom criteria such as CI environment variables for these scanners. For running CI CD code, you can either insert a CI code block or link to an existing CI file. This feature ensures that scanners or custom CI CD code runs regardless of what's defined in the project's CI YAML. With GitLab, you can leverage the vulnerability report, which provides information about vulnerabilities from scans of the default branch. This is the area where the security team can triage and manage vulnerabilities within their group or project. At all levels, the vulnerability report contains the totals of the vulnerabilities per severity level, filters for common vulnerability attributes, such as the status, severity, tool used, and if there's been any activity performed on the actual vulnerability. If viewing the vulnerability report at the group level, you can also sort by project. You can also submit a new vulnerability manually and export this report as needed. You can also view the operational vulnerabilities detected, which are vulnerabilities that were detected in external sources, such as your Kubernetes cluster. From the GitLab vulnerability report, after sorting and looking through, you can see all the vulnerabilities and when they've been detected, their status, severity, a description, identifier, and the tool used. If I scroll down, I'll click on the improper neutralization of special elements used in a SQL command, AKA a SQL injection. Once I click on that vulnerability, I'm provided with vulnerability insights similar to those seen in a merge request that give me a description, the severity, the project that was detected in, the tool and scanner, as well as the location, some identifiers providing useful links such as the CWE, as well as training from our different partners. From here, we can use AI to explain this vulnerability and show how to mitigate it. Once we send the prompt to the LLM, we'll have information on how the vulnerability affects our system, the vulnerable code that was detected, how to actually exploit the code, and how to resolve it. These results are geared towards the language we are using for development. Additionally, you can resolve this vulnerability with AI, which creates a merge request with the appropriate solution. 
Here we see an AI generated patch resolving our vulnerability and retesting the pipeline. From the vulnerability insight, we can also create a confidential issue or add an existing issue to this vulnerability. I can go ahead and change the status of this vulnerability. Let's say I'm confirming that it is valid after doing some analysis, and you'll see that it's been confirmed by me. From here, I can provide reasoning as to why I've confirmed it. This will allow other members of the security team to collaborate and triage issues appropriately. These statuses can also be changed in batch mode. In order to assess the security posture of your applications, you can use GitLab's security dashboards. At the group level, the security dashboard provides trends over a 30, 60, or 90 day time frame for all projects in a group. Each project will contain a letter grade rating based on the vulnerability severities, F being the highest and A being no vulnerabilities present. When selecting a vulnerable project, we can see the security dashboard at the project view, which has the total number of vulnerabilities detected within the last 365 days, including their severity. You can use the data provided to supply an insight on what decisions can be made to improve your security posture. For example, you can examine the code changes that were performed on days where a high number of vulnerabilities were introduced in order to obtain a root cause analysis to create better policies for preventing these vulnerabilities in the future. For managing your software supply chain security, GitLab provides the dependency list, sometimes referred to as the Software Bill of Materials or SBOM. From here, details of each dependency are listed, sorted by decreasing severity of vulnerabilities. The dependency list contains the component, showcasing the dependency's name and version, the packager used to install the dependency, the location of the dependency, as well as its license. At the group view, you can also see the project the dependency was detected in. This report can be downloaded into Cyclone DX format and easily converted into SPDX. When clicking on a dependency, you can see all the vulnerabilities detected within that dependency. And when clicking on a vulnerability, you are redirected to that vulnerabilities report showcasing a description, the location, as well as relevant links and identifiers, and a solution. You can triage and manage this vulnerability as seen in the vulnerability report section. For managing your compliance, GitLab provides the Compliance Center, which is a central location for compliance teams to manage their compliance standard adherence reporting, violations reporting, and compliance frameworks for their group. Within the GitLab standard adherence, you can see if you comply with particular GitLab standards, such as preventing authors as approvers, preventing committers as approvers, and having at least two approvals within a merge request. We can group by certain criteria, as well as filter by the standard project or check. Here, we're provided with the status, project, check, standard, date since last change, and more information. When clicking on view details, we can see where a GitLab standard was violated with the requirement, the failure reason, as well as information on how to fix. We can export these reports as a CSV for further analysis. Within the violation section, we can see a high-level view of merge request activity for all projects in the group. When you select the role in the compliance violation report, a drawer appears providing relevant information such as a link to the merge request, the project name and compliance framework label, as well as those responsible for the violation. You can also sort 
by different projects, dates, as well as target branches. The framework section allows you to see all the compliance frameworks in a group and each row of the report shows the framework name and associated projects. From here, you can also create new compliance frameworks, which can be applied to your projects in order to enforce a custom CICD compliance pipeline to run using the scan execution policies. In the project section, you can see the compliance frameworks that are applied to projects in a group. Each row provides the project name, project path, and compliance framework. We can either add a framework or we can select multiple projects to apply a particular framework to or remove frameworks from the selected projects. GitLab also allows you to create custom roles with granular security permissions, allowing you to really limit what actions users can perform and enabling principle of least privilege. You can set a minimum base role, such as a guest, and then assign that guest with certain permissions. For example, admin CICD variables and admin compliance frameworks. This means that they'll only be able to perform the minimum amount of actions that are defined in a guest user, along with the ones I've just selected. Once a custom role is created, it can be applied to any user within any group or project. A security audit is an in-depth analysis which is used to display areas of concern and potential hazardous practices. This is crucial for obtaining compliance. To assist with the audit process, GitLab provides audit events which allows you to track a variety of different actions within GitLab. For example, audit events can be used to track who changed the permission level of a particular user for a given project and when, as well as who added a new user, removed one, along with the time frame. Here, you can see the project audit events, which provide an author, the object which was manipulated, the action, a target, the IP address, and date which the action occurred. You're able to sort by the last seven days, 14 days, this month, or add your own date criteria. These events can also be streamed to an external endpoint for further processing. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click that like button and subscribe. If you want to learn more about GitLab's security and governance features, see the links in the description.